This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Netflix. As you guys know, before we end episode, episode 1011. 1011. You know what that means? It means we're in season 10, episode 11? Yeah, but it's binary. It's another nibble. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. And then 1 and then 0 and 1, 1. That would be 8 plus 2 plus 1. That's, that's 11. Yeah. You know, at one time I knew binary, but not anymore. No, this is fantastic. You, you, you've got to understand, Shannon, this is the last binary episode for 50 years when we do season... 100 episode one episode and I'll be, 12 will be next week be like 78 years old oh wow I'm not aging anymore so I'm good you're a vampire it might be watch bike club you'll you'll understand bike club showdown. hey let's tr let's check port 110 huh okay yeah all right let's do that email time so Chad's email says I am running a G band wireless network through my place it's I have thing I have Comcast <laughs> for my internet. My speed, when tested at speedtest.net, is usually 30 megabytes down. Keep going. And 12 megabytes up. So here's the question. At what speed through my ISP do I top out my G-band? If you go by the usual up to 54 megabytes per second transfer, data transfer speed, that that isn't that still above my 30 megabytes per second down speed, why would I want to change it up to an end network besides a newer platform? I have two computers, one TiVo Series 2, but only wireless G adapter, and a Roku box, so am I really going to notice any speed difference? I was looking at the Linksys E2000 802.11 ABG and N, but people say mixing signals and routers kill speed, and then the 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz signal I don't care about since I don't have anything that will run on 5 gigahertz. So what do you guys think? <sighs> and is my ISP speed past the G band? Yeah, okay, going. so I totally see what he's saying here, and that is, <laughs> you know, he has a mixed environment. He has environment. lots of questions. Well, he has a lot of questions, but they're all very valid. I mean, 802.11n is the new protocol. It's, yes. it's up to 100 and something megabits per second. But it's hard That's to find anything that actually goes that high. Well, you could. I mean, there's the new Roku. Yeah. It's got it. Um, the problem is, if any of the devices on your network in your 802.11n at 100 megabit something uh, it aren't compatible. Yes. It, now, n is backwards compatible with G, but as soon as a G shows up, it then it down. drops down the entire it drops network. Down the G, yeah. So what's the point of? You're right. There's no point for you to go to an 802.11n network unless you're going to replace all of your gear. And even then, your local speed on your Wi-Fi is going to be faster than that that your ISP Comcast is providing anyway. I mean, right now with G, you're theoretically getting 54 megabits per second, which is still faster, in theory, than the 30 megabits per second that they're selling you and test because you know they, you never get that. Yeah. But um, True. But the, there's a lot of factors, more than just the protocol, to consider here. And okay. we've talked about this before with like, you know, what routers we like. You guys know that we love mono wall, smooth wall, and any x86 router you can build, not some little plastic blue box you get from the big box store. I mean, those things have like a Dorito for a CPU. So the same kind of thing <laughs> applies to your wireless access point where you've got a beefy wireless access point with like a real CPU that's not going to be like, you know, dropping tables every single time right. you have more than 100 TCP connections to your favorite BitTorrent server, you know, and you're resetting the router. Um, so there's that to keep in mind. And of course now there are new gaming routers where they do put higher performance chips and stuff in them. But it's, it's a combination of all of those things. But I'll still say, for you there's no reason to upgrade to N. Yeah, um, I agree. There is a lot of overhead that also goes into this. So we were talking in the, uh, uh, go and check out, I forget what exact episode number it is of Hack Tip though, but in the Hack Tip Wi-Fi series, uh, we go over all of the different protocols and basically 802.11b, while it has a theoretical max of like 11 megabits per second, since it uses this one method of protocol encoding, you'd be lucky to get like six. Really? Yeah, there's a wow. lot of overhead that, that's involved. So when they say, that's surprising. Yeah, well, it's kind of like when you go to buy some car stereo speakers and they're like 5,000 yeah, watts and yeah. it's like RMS 50 or something. Yep. Yeah. I agree. 
I, I actually ended up getting my mom a um, N router mm -hmm. just because I know she's not going to update it for like 10 years. So I figured might as well get that now and then I can, you know, over the course of the next 10 years just upgrade all of her yeah. stuff. Well, it's kind of like balancing your network when like, okay, so you just built a new computer. Yes. And, and Keith built a new computer. Yes. So you guys are like familiar with the whole, you need to balance your system. You couldn't right. have like a rockin' CPU and a piece of crap video card because yes. one's going to gimp the other or mm -hmm. vice versa. Um, the same applies to your network. It would make no sense for you to have, you know, buy a 30 megabit connection from Comcast and have a Doxis 1.0 modem from the 90s. I know your mom had that yes. issue, right? <laughs> she did. I mean, her, her modem <laughs> We what actually is had a crank so drive on it, right? Wipe the dust off. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, no like, good. my the wireless access point I accidentally left in my neighbor's house down the street that I'm using my Yagi antenna to connect to is a Linksys WET11B, which oh. is a very old. I think that's it's circa 1999. Yeah. It's a B network, so this is why I'm capping yeah, out. I think my I'm capping out at three like megabits that. per second on this thing, and it's because not only, and I checked because the admin password was ADMIN, thanks Linksys, um, but uh, their modem is like a Doxis 1 modem, you can tell from the MAC address, and it's wow. like, yeah. So it, it doesn't even matter, because if they got an end network tomorrow, they'd still have a piece of crap modem, and there would be your bottleneck. So it sounds, so like, with G. It sounds like right now you actually have a balanced enough, I mean, as long as you're rocking like a I mean, even 30 megabits of Doxis 2 would do it. Mm -hmm. So as long as, you know, so that's what I'm saying, is unless you're looking to replace all of your gear, get a new 3.0 modem, get a new N router, and replace your TiVo, uh, <laughs> sure, but that's not going to happen overnight. And that's why N is backwards compatible, but it just gets, yeah. There you go. It's a G thing. Stick with G. It's a G thing. All right, our second email comes from Blacktop. He says, or she says, I have been trying to use Aircrack and G from a virtual environment where my Wi-Fi is ETH zero. So I would like to buy a USB wireless adapter. I looked online and they are all pretty cheap, but the Aircrack and G compatibility list might as well be in the Arabic. <laughs> and Tiger, Tiger Direct doesn't list firmware specs. So are there any ideas on this? Yeah, absolutely. So you guys know I swear by the um, Realtek 8187L chipset. In yes. fact, I'm going to plug mine in here, and I don't know if Paul's going to be able to get this, but basically, if I have if config WLAN 7 up, I have that guy plugged in. Yes, I do. It's not WLAN 7. If config WLAN 8 up. All right. So WLAN 8 is my um, Realtek 8187 chip, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of Airmon, TAC, NG, start WLAN 8. And we can see now it creates a new adapter here, Mon 0. So I say arrow dump TAC, NG, Mon 0. I'm not going to give any parameters. But suddenly, our bayonet here, if you will, is sniffing all of the stuff and we're channel hopping and this is good, right? Uh, and this is that it was that simple because we're using a supported chipset. And I totally know your frustration because I have been that guy that has gone to Fry's yes. or Micro Center or whatever big box store and you've got like maybe like a wiki that says, oh yes, the D-Link DL100B7 has the chipset you need that'll work, like an Atheros or something like that. Right. And then you get there and you're like, oh cool, the D-Link 100 B7. And then it says revision 1.1 and you find out it's a Broadcom. Like yeah. I did with this guy. I'm serious, I, I talked about in how the A block, how I uh, replaced the chassis by just getting a new one. Turns out there was a difference even in the same model and there was absolutely no indication on the website really? or anywhere that they changed this. So when I swapped computers, not only did I have to swap the hard drive, but the Atheros chip that I know and love yes. was replaced with a Broadcom because it was probably five cents cheaper that Aww. week when Acer made them. Thanks, Acer. You know? So, yeah, yeah, I will put that out there. I feel your pain. There. I feel your pain. Uh, you would be hard pressed to find an 8187L that doesn't love any Linux distro that's modern. Um, and, and even Windows. You will find problems with Mac. The latest version of OS X isn't going to like it. Oh, right. Um, 
And but all the older ones do. And it isn't going to do, like we were just talking about, N and G. It's not going to do N. There are a couple of N chips, and we're actually looking at them. I have a whole bunch on order that I'm playing with. The thing is, you want something universally uh, supported, and the, the, the 8187L is. Uh, so if you go to the Aircrack NG wiki, you'll actually find a list of compatible hardware. That happens to be the one that I like. And full disclosure, we do sell that one in the hack shop, mm -hmm. but I've been rocking this. If you look at the show, I've been rocking this chip for the last six years because yeah. it's just kind of the one. You know, it, then, it's the one you have to have in your well, yeah, backpack. Well, that's the one though. Is like you know, all it, when all of the tutorials reference that one chip. Yeah. Are you gonna do the uphill battle of trying to get some other chip to work? Because I've done it. I've done a raw link. It'll take too much time. Thirty ninety or thirty seventy, yeah. and it's like, all right. I'd rather play video games. <sighs> video games are fun. We should play some video games. I'm getting tired. We should. But first, we have a uh, one more email. Oh. Great. We do. Another email. Okay, so this one comes from Jake. He asks, with air spoof, I was wondering what happens to the IP forward variable after you are done sniffing. I would assume you would just set it back to zero, but what happens if you leave it at one? Sure, so the file in question that he's talking about is actually here, I'll cat it. It's uh, slash proc slash sys slash net slash IPv4 slash IP underscore forward. And you'll see here that it's set to a one. And if I wanted to, I can just like echo one into it, mm -hmm. and now it's a one. And what does that mean? That just means simply that I can now forward packets from one interface to another. It's kind of like, uh, it's one element of the IP tables things that you're gonna need to do to do like um, basically internet connection sharing. This is what I do when like I set up a pineapple and I want clients connected to the pineapple to get on the internet through like my 3G modem or something on my laptop like that. Okay. Uh, if you don't set it back to zero, and of course this is what you would do in a man in the middle attack where I've told you I'm Paul and I've told Paul that yes. I'm you, I would want to enable forwarding. Yes. Otherwise, I'm like, hey Paul, I'm Shannon. You wanna tell her a secret? Cool, what's the secret? And then I don't tell you. Yeah. What fun is that, <laughs> you know? So you, if you don't set it back, it's just gonna chill that way probably until your next reboot. Um, you know, depending on your network setup, it's probably not gonna cause that many problems. It doesn't really um, hurt anything. It doesn't really hurt anything. You might wanna set it back. A lot of programs are automatically do. Okay. So yeah, they're, I mean, pretty simple. Cool, yep. well that's it for the emails. Stay tuned because we'll be right back with this week's Tetanus photo and the trivia after a quick break. With Netflix, the world's largest subscription streaming service, you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies to your Microsoft Xbox 360, the Sony PS3 console, the Nintendo Wii console, and your computer for one low monthly price. No late fees, no due dates, and for a limited time, Hack5 viewers can get a free 30-day trial membership at netflix.com slash hack5. Sign up now and be sure to use this URL so they know we sent you. Guess what time it is? Time for Technolus Photo of the Week? Yes. All right, cool, let's do it. This week's Technolus Photo is from our dear friends, John and Annette. Oh, I On their John honeymoon in their bungalow in Tahiti nice. with the evil server shirt. Yeah, we have known John and Annette for years, ever since they started dating. They are the cutest couple in all of Hoboken, New Jersey. They are. And we're going to give a shout out here to Zadogis, Turds and Turds Treats and on Treats. Twitter. The it's cutest the little story puppies ever. Of Frankie and Brandy. <laughs> It's it's cute. You just gotta you just gotta check it out. Yeah. So. so these guys have been our dear friends. We've known them ever since they started dating. When they went to San Francisco for the engagement, and they started dating in New York City. We were there. Yeah. We feel so special, and I love you guys. So congrats, congratulations to both of you. That's good on mojo your from us to I you. I hope you had an awesome time. And if you guys have pictures, make sure to send them over to feedback at hack5.org. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a doggy that wants to wear a Hack Five shirt? I mean. Or a kitty. Kitties could do that too, <laughs> just saying. All right, I'm ready. You're I'm ready, ready for okay. some trivia because I know a lot of people didn't get this one right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny. They didn't get last week's right either. Okay, yeah, last week's one, question. One did. All right, so last week's question was, Metasploit was originally coded for what purpose? Drawing ASCII cows. The answer was a game. Oh, I just lost it. Which you just lost. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thanks, thanks. How about this week? 
This week's question is, this humorous RFC of the Internet Engineering Task Force describes a communication and control protocol suite designed for allowing infinite numbers of monkeys with infinite numbers of typewriters to produce the entire works of William Shakespeare. Oh, of course. What is it called? Everybody knows the old adage, but nobody remembers the RFC number. Exactly. Do you? And if you do know it, you can answer over at hack5.org slash trivia for a chance to win some swag. And while you're there, remember to just, you know, subscribe to the show. It's a free and easy way to support us. Hack5.org slash subscribe. Find out all the ways that you can do that. Whether that's iTunes, YouTube, and you can always get all of your favorite Hack 5 goodies over at the Hack Shop. It's hakshop.com. Oh, yeah. We've got a special going for the holiday season on the Wi-Fi adapters we were we talking do. about. We do, yes. We're bundling with it with our DVDs. best of Wi-Fi DVDs so you can, like, veg out at home, sit there with your laptop and your adapter, just pop it on the TV yep. and follow along. And it's good stuff. Perfect for classes, for yeah. IT specialists, it's everything fun. like that. It's we fun. got USB rubber You know what else is fun? Are the Hack Tips. Every Friday, tune in and find out what Shannon and I are doing with all sorts of fun happenings. It's, it's just condensed Technolust. Condensed Technolust. And you can always follow us on Twitter, Google+, Plus, Facebook, you know, all the, all the, fun all the happy places. Happens. Yeah, find out find where Find out all be the up-to-date news in about your town, South owning your Wi-Fi, Stealing your daughters, you know. What? Come drink a beer. No. I'm not going to be stealing any daughters. Maybe, all right, and maybe with boys. all of that said, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Pound and Clue, trust your Technolust at H. She bang. <laughs> she bang, she bang, she bang. <laughs>